everybody on Facebook, my name is Mike Fallot. If you don't know who I am, I help entrepreneurs write books and I teach them how to use it as a marketing tool. Recently, I made a post regarding uh, people who started from zero and people who did not. I actually get to interview and ask questions of people who did start from zero because their story is so, to me, romantic. So you're gonna hear from a guy, his name is Michael John. I'm gonna be connecting him now. Just make sure that he's able to be seen. So one second, guys, bear with me. All righty. Michael John, are you there? And are you able to see it on my page or your page? You should be able to uh, see everything now. I am here. I'm just reloading your page. Everything should be good to go now. So let me know if you have any issues. Um, I think there's going to be some uh, some people jumping in right now. But are you able to see it? Uh, I didn't see it on my page. Just going back to your page quickly here. There we go. Should be working. Yeah, there we are. I see it now. Cool, man. Well, well, thank you so much for doing this. Like I said, I like to interview a lot of entrepreneurs out there who, you know, I want to hear their story. I help people tell their story. And, you know, I'm all about using your story as your competitive advantage to get to the next level with your business. Now, I come from a background where no money, no connections, but I'm able to use what happened to me and obviously my strengths to get to the next level. And that's what I try to teach other people. So with your story, it's pretty incredible when you reached out to me, what you were able to do starting at 19 years old. And I'd love for you to you know, introduce yourself to the audience that mostly are all entrepreneurs. So who are you and what do you do? Uh, so my name is uh, Mike Turner. Michael John is just uh, my middle name. So. Okay. As I go on Facebook, um, I'm a landscape business owner, so we do maintenance, just grass cutting, fall, spring cleanup, aeration, snow removal, and I just try to focus on each one of those lists individually and uh, grow clients in that aspect. Where are you located at? London, Ontario, Canada. It's about two hours away from Toronto. So your winters are going to be pretty terrible. You're going to have a lot of gigs lined up. Is that right? Yeah, we got some snow last night. So <laughs> oh, are man. <laughs> that's iffy that's bad i'm in pittsburgh pennsylvania so i don't know if it's uh, even comparable we still get bad here but here it's really bad in canada yeah it's, it's a hit and miss well i i think you're you're familiar with what we do here um there are a lot of entrepreneurs out there who are starting from zero somewhere where you you know you're familiar with if what you did is you basically took an idea and you told me a little bit about it but tell me how you got started and how you grew it with basically no equipment <laughs> which is awesome yeah so basically what I was uh, just saying before is I worked for a company for three years and I was saving up all my money to go to school to become a welder and then over the course of one winter I just decided it wasn't really something I wanted to do and I did enjoy doing landscaping so I figured all oh, let's give it a shot and I told two of my friends I'm like hey in the next two years uh, push me to like start this business and then a couple of weeks later, I realized, like, no one's ever going to make you do anything in life. So I just got to go for it. And then after that moment, like in that mental chatter, I realized I'm like, OK, I'm committed to doing this. Like, I'm going to put all the money I've saved up on the line. I had about 7000 saved up. So I slowly started buying one or two pieces of equipment and knocking on doors. So when I started knocking on the doors, I actually had not owned a vehicle yet. So I was borrowing my one friend's truck for about the first two weeks, knocking on doors. I was getting work each day, putting on the following day, uh, do the work in the morning, and then go home, shower, and then go back out, knocking on doors about 3 p.m., 4 p.m. to about 7 at night, get work for the following day, and it was just a repeat, repeating cycle. Looking back on it now, that first week or two, like, really kept my drive going because I just kept on getting work the next day, the next day, and I was doing better than I was with the landscaping business I was before. So you you basically winged it right from the get-go. When you got out there, you started knocking on doors, you didn't have your equipment, you were able to sell jobs when you didn't even have anything, and that's when you started, okay, there's a demand here. You tested the demand before you even yeah. invested, which is brilliant, brilliant. Yes. So I had, uh, I started in roughly April. So like where I'm from, that's about spring cleanup. So the only piece of equipment at that time I had was just a blower to clean up leaves. Um, uh, like my parents rake, 
<laughs> really yeah. bootstrapping this whole thing, which is incredible. Yeah, Abs like literally absolutely nothing. And then about uh, two months in, I had already got about anywhere from eight to 15 grass cutting customers. And then that time came to buy a lawnmower. So I did have money saved up, but I was very frugal with it. I didn't just buy things right away. I was trying to like make customers and get some cash flow coming in before I just dumped everything. But did, about you, two, did yeah. you have any sales experience? How did you sell to people? Did you realize that, you know what, if I don't sell, I'm not going to eat. So I better just put myself out there. How, there's a lot of people that I work with that might not know how to sell themselves and they're afraid to promote themselves. So how did you get over that barrier? Uh, yeah, totally. So I had zero sales experience. So, uh, my, what I'd open with, up with at the door is basically what I told you. So I'd say, well, do you have a minute? And I said, I worked for three years for this company, which happened to be one of the biggest companies in London. And I said, oh, do you know them? And then lots of them did. So they instantly had that connection of, oh, they work for this big company. Then I said, well, I worked for them. I wanted to save up money to become a welder. I realized I didn't want to do it. And like, I want to start a landscape business. Can I take care of your property? And that so, line actually. So what you did was you were pure, purely honest with them. You said, listen, I'm, it's not up and running. I would like to help you out. Would you want to invest in me? That type of, that type of philosophy. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Completely honest with them from the get go. And I swear to God, that's so rare out there, you know, and that's another reason why I'm trying to create this, you know, started from zero movement is because I want to expose the people who are, you know, taking money out of their parents' bank, put it on their bed, taking a picture and put it right back, back in the bank. I want authenticity, transparency, being honest, because that's what's going to showcase you're different than everyone else. You're putting yourself out there in the most real fashion. I think people need to start seeing that because it's rare on the internet and I really wanted to highlight that. So that's amazing you did that at 19 years old. You weren't trying to make yourself look like this big time image. You were being honest and that's how you were able to yeah. get customers. It actually was uh, 21 being all honest with that. I started um, at 21. No, okay, yeah. 21, okay. So I, whenever I read it, I thought it was 19, but you started at 21, yeah. you're making what, $4,000 yeah. a week doing this? Now, now I'm at, yeah, the first year I finished up, but, so I started in April and then this, when December came, all the clients I had about 27 clients and I was making about 950 a week. And this is uh, three and a half years later and I'm roughly at 110 clients and I'm making easily 4,000 a week in season. You're at 110 clients. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Wait, uh, how many people are in your operation? Uh, at the moment, I had three this summer, so me and two others. But uh, that was my brother and then one other. And my brother had to go to school for fan shows, so it's just me and one other person right now. So That's, that's truly incredible. I, I'll be honest. I, I was a landscaper. I would cut grass for, for a man before. I cut, I think it was like 30, 35 or 40 properties a week. And that destroyed yeah. me. Like it truly was like taking everything out of me and no time for anything else. So doing 110, when you do 110, is it once every week, once every two weeks? What do you do? Oh, uh, we do about 110 clients we have and about 20, 25 of them are biweekly. So we cut anywhere from 80 to 90 yards a week. And wow, man. About 15 to 22 a day on average. Yeah. What the first year, was it a, a pure struggle? T tell me about that first year of actually – you know, not having any money, getting clients, trying to pay bills, buying equipment, maybe even borrowing equipment. How did you do all that? And what was that first year like? Because there's a lot of people out there saying, you know what, I want to start a business. I have no money. So up, I'm going to go cheap working for someone else that I don't want to, because obviously I'm stuck here. You made a decision at that age of 21 even to do it. So what was that first year like? Yeah. So, uh, one of the biggest milestones I'd say in my first year is probably in the second or third month when I just finished buying everything. I bought the truck, I bought a lot of other pieces of equipment that I needed. And so I had one trimmer and I was on this property. And at this point I had about 10 or 12 clients. And uh, so it was about 400 bucks a week I was making roughly. And uh, my one trimmer went down on me in the middle of the property. And I was like, oh my God, like I got to go get this fixed, but I don't have time to get it fixed because I'm working all by myself at this point, right? So. I don't want to fall behind. I want really good customer service and show that I'm reliable and you be there and everything. So I went into the uh, store to get it fixed. And then I just bought another trimmer because I didn't want to wait. <laughs> and it was about 500 bucks. And at that day, my bank account fell to $400. So I, I started with 7,200. And then about three months later, I fell to $400. And that was like the biggest scare moment pretty well I ever had. But I was a little... Uh, 
I wasn't that scared because I at least did have these 10, 12 clients and I was still knocking on doors trying to go get more. So how, that was how would you knock on doors? Would you knock them on, on the weekends or do it at night or how would you do that? Cause you're working during the day most likely probably, right? Yeah. So typically I'd get home around like three or 4 PM and then uh, I'd shower and like get all cleaned up, do my hair and go back out, look presentable. Oh and man. Knock that's on doors. Awesome. Yeah. So I was just looking back on it now. That was definitely one of my most striving weeks, you know? Working early in the morning, going home, showering, and then going right back out at it. And would selling. you? Would you buy? You have to tell us us uh, gearheads and landscapers. Steel, oh. Shindawa. Would you buy? I had all top end stuff. Yeah, so I bought Steel and Toro. Pretty Toro. Well. And uh, I'm a big fan of Toro also, especially the older stuff. Yeah. So my first mower that I got was uh, without going into too much detail was uh, I bought a homeowner version. Yeah, uh, so it's it was about twelve hundred dollars for the mower, opposed to twenty five hundred dollars for the commercial mower. And then about two years later, it, it broke down on me so many times that now I've switched all to commercial mowers. And you know, you get what you pay for, definitely. So I stick with the good stuff. I buy brand new. I don't buy used equipment. What would you and, say was the key? Now, there's you started at twenty one. There's a lot of twenty one year olds that I talk to on a daily basis through Facebook and Instagram. What would you say was the key for you to, you know, you know, you saved up enough money working for someone else. You had the 7,200 bucks. What was the key that got you through that first year, second year that made you successful to this day? That's probably still what I look at today is just the end goal. So eventually being able to sit at the desk and have multiple employees out there working. So I'm still working towards that. Definitely. But, uh, yeah, I just what, you always, mean the vision that was your vision. Yeah, I'm always focused on the long term. Gotcha. Anything that comes up is just a bump in the road. It's funny as I just got off a call with uh, one of our clients and he was talking about in the in the chapter of his book is that, you know, don't ever play the short term, always play the long term. And I, I'm, I agree with that because this is not a this is not a sprint. This is a marathon and you're going to be doing this hopefully for a very long time. So don't try to make these quick little bucks and hurt your name in the in the beginning. You really yeah, want to grow your name. That's just like in the first year, I was telling all my clients, like this, this isn't gonna, this isn't a short-term job. Like this is gonna be my career. Like I'm fully committed to this in the long-term run. Like ten years is short. Wow, wow. And yeah. and and how did you start to get? Now I've worked in home remodeling. I've worked in uh, landscaping. I would go and you know knock on doors or whatever. I would say you know we're down the road doing a job at X so and so's house. Did you do the exact same thing? So it was one of those, oh, you're working on their house? Of course you can work on my house now because there's that trust built up. Did you do, start yeah. to uh, deploy those tricks? So I, I've i actually uh, I've got a way in my first and second year, if I were to pick up a client on a street, I would door to door the 100 houses around there and say, hey, I'm on your street, like taking care of one of your neighbors, et cetera, et cetera. I haven't been doing that recently, but uh, it was it, it did work. So I need to get back on that tactic for sure. Oh, but yeah, it's a fantastic uh, uh, sales now, technique. It does work definitely. Now, um, what is what is something that uh, you see a weakness in your in your in maybe what you're doing? Maybe there's something you need to work on. What is something that you see maybe your social media? Uh, what is something that you're really you see a weakness and you're working on now? Uh, yep. So technically, I don't even have a website, um, and I, I'm not, I'm not pumping social media at all, to be honest either. So uh, those are definitely weaknesses that I could work on. But for the most part, I've just been, uh, as of this year, really reading books on sales and negotiations, and uh, trying to deal with those people that are trying to low bid you down in price. <laughs> don't don't go down too low too fast or don't even drop yeah. at all man because it'll yeah value right from the get-go you gotta you gotta hold your ground i've also uh really been working on microsoft excel as far as managing goes so i've learned a lot of things on that and uh planning my routes like i bought a map of the city and i put pins of it all my clients on it every single day i did that two years ago and that really helped my perspective of my drive time of all my routes. So I saved massive amounts of time by uh, getting that visual. When is it time to start going from commercial to, or from residential to commercial? Are you making next, that move yet? Next year. Yeah. Now I'm finally at the point. I've finally bought enough equipment and I've got the big riding lawnmowers now. So I got, yeah, I got everything. I got all the pieces of equipment that I need now. So 
now's the time next year. I tell people all the time, you know, smile politely, be nice to everyone, but your job is to put your competition out of business. So, you know, whatever you see an opening, whatever it's with a friend or uh, somebody you know that works at a place that you can maybe get a, a really big client, do whatever you do and then over deliver once you get them because then that name is going to share. And once they are our client, you can say, hey, this big corporation is now our client. You use that to your advantage and every step of the way, be more resourceful. Yeah. I, I, in, in my mindset, I never even look at the company competition. It's a little cocky to say, but I'm just here to dominate. <laughs> <laughs> You're a big fan of uh, Grant Cardone then, huh? Dominate. Don't ever play. Don't play in the fray. Play above it. Yeah. Yeah. I like it, man. All right. So, uh, uh, for everybody out there, whether, you know, they're just starting from zero, whether they have, you know, a business that's up and running, um, you know, what we try to do here is say to people that your story, there's a lot of power in it. Now, Michael was telling us early on in this interview that he just walked up, he was honest, he showed who he was. He didn't even have a business yet, but because he told his story in a convincing way and was authentic and it was true, people bought in and that's how he had the money to actually buy equipment and get more customers. So that's, that's, Huge man, and we're we're trying to start the uh, uh, the started from zero movement. So we're trying to highlight people who really do have a struggle and a difficult time in the very beginning. Um, and we we're doing contests for people who you know are a part of our audience and our network. And the winner of today's T-shirt, by the way, Michael, I don't know if you saw in yesterday's Facebook Live, but his name is Ricky Hale. So congratulations, Ricky. We'll be sending you a T-shirt. I'll be direct messaging you after this video. So thank you so much because you did the uh, the contest that you know you obviously are starting from zero, and there's people that need motivation and see that people like Michael John are out there. They're they're succeeding. They they started from zero. They're making four thousand dollars a a week doing landscape in Ontario, and now they're doing you know have two different employees. Started at twenty one. Now you're twenty six. Is that correct? Uh, nope. I'm turning 25 in December. 20, you're 20. Unbelievable. So we're talking four <laughs> years, four years and you grew this thing. Now, what do you, what's your parents think of you, by the way? Uh, yep. Yeah, uh, they're definitely <laughs> proud. Yeah. So as of like this year, kind of got to the point where, you know, almost making more money than them and I'm still living at their house. So there's a little bit of frustration going on for sure. As long as you gave back the rake that you borrowed. Just, as long as you did that, you're okay, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. Uh, you know, if there's anything I can do to help you out with the website or social media, um, I have, you know, whether it's resources or some things I can maybe teach you, I'd love to help you out and stay connected with you, man. Uh, Cause you know, I love hearing people struggle and, and, and how they're using, you know, where they came from as basically a stepping stone to get to the next level. And I love seeing that. And uh, thank you so much for doing this. And anybody out there, if you have any questions about maybe starting a landscape company or starting from where, you know, maybe a background, if you're in Ontario, please reach out to Michael John. What's your Instagram handle, by the way? Uh, it's Michael turns with a Z. So Michael T U R N Z. Cool. All right, man. Well, uh, you know, Let's stay in touch. Let's uh, work together on something in the future and keep me posted, okay? Will do. Hey, thank you so much. Thanks. Anybody out there who else is looking to, you know, you know, understand where to go, how to use their story as a competitive advantage, I'd love to help you out. And if you're ever interested and you have a story to tell that you be, you started from zero and now you're at a new place in your career, we want to hear from it. So reach out to me and I'll interview you on the Started From Zero series. Thank you so much, guys. And remember, the next chapter is all that matters. Right on. All right, Mike, we're out. We're, I think we're done now. So thank you so much, man. That's awesome. No it, I'll tell you right now, Mike, um, you're so like not a salesman. Like you're so like real down to earth and humble. And um, that's a real refreshing thing. So really nice job on that, man.